This is a tutorial on how to use the Logger Pro video analysis software to look at the motion in a video that you've recorded. So I have a new Logger Pro file, and to get started here, I know I'm going to need two graphs in this particular experiment I'm going to do, so I'm just going to go ahead and set those up now. I'm going to insert an additional graph, and once we have the video analyzed, we'll decide what to put on those graphs. Now, to actually import the video, I'm going to go to Insert Movie and then browse to the folder where you have the video saved. I'm going to use this video here. Click Open and the video will be loaded in this window here. Now, before I can actually mark the points in the video, I need to do some setup um, to tell Logger Pro what some video properties here. So I'm going to right click on the video screen and go to movie options. So down here I want to look at override frame rate 2. Now this identified the correct frame rate. On your device you, you are probably going to um, record with a higher frame rate um, which would look nice but here is where you check that the frames per second FPS is correct. And so here it's correctly identified 30 frames per second for this video here. So now I am uh, ready to set the scale for the video. And you'll notice that in this video, the creators have anticipated that we are going to need to calibrate the scale. So they've actually hung this stick in the center of the frame that is known to be a meter long. You can use a meter stick. You can use something that you know the exact length. I'm going to click on this button down here with the three dots and the arrow to expose the tools. And then I'm going to... Um, click on the ruler here to set the calibration scale. Now wherever I draw this line is where I'm telling Logger Pro my calibration stick is. So I'm telling Logger Pro that my stick is there and now in the window that pops up I tell uh, Logger Pro that that stick is one meter long. So I'll click OK. And now the calibration is set and it knows the distance that this object is going to travel. The other thing that is useful to do is to set my coordinate axes. So I'll click on this button here with the uh, green crosses that looks like a coordinate axis. And when I come over here, it's going, wherever I click is going to be the origin. Now I might find it useful to see the thrown object before I set that. So let me advance the frames a little bit. I'm going to click on the arrow buttons here until I actually see the object. And so now I can set this at the origin so that um, the first frame for which I acquire data is going to be the origin. So I click on that once and now my horizontal axis is going to be X, vertical axis is Y. And if you'd like you can drag on this big solid, uh, drag on the big solid yellow dot and actually rotate the coordinate axes. But for this I'm going to leave them uh, horizontal and vertical. So now we're ready to tell the software where the object is at each moment in time. Now notice we're not starting this from the very first frame in the movie because the very first frame in the movie, either the object isn't in motion yet or we don't know where it is. Um, often you'll have several frames where the object is just at rest at the beginning of the movie. So you want to wait until the object is in motion. And here I know that the object is being released from this person's hand. So this will be the first location. I'm going to click on the crosshairs with the red dot in the middle and you want to click on the same location of the object for each frame. So this one's small enough I can click in the center. If you have a larger object like a car or something you would want to pick a point on the car um, and be consistent. So notice when I click that it sets the X and Y position and then advances the video for me. So I'm going to continue that for each frame of interest. And so you can progress pretty efficiently. So notice it plots the X and Y values as I am 
clicking on the video so you can see everything plotted in real time. And there we go, that's what I'm going to plot. So it plotted the X position and the Y position on the same uh, axes. Um, let's say uh, maybe I just want to focus on the, the Y values, so the Y position and the Y velocity. I'm just going to go ahead and hide the X value, and you can do that by clicking on the axis and choosing what it is that you want it to display. And then we'll come down here to this new graph we made, and um, when we click on the Y axis, we'll have to tell it the data to look, la look at, so we'll click on more and go to the uh, Y velocity. That's the one that we want to plot on these axes. Now to make that into a form that's easier to see, you can click and zoom or you can just go up here to the toolbar where there's a capital A and use the auto zoom. And that will uh, zoom in uh, on the area of interest. So we can analyze any set of data we want. For this demo, I'm going to focus on the velocity versus time graph. And I'm going to notice that these first couple of data points aren't following the trend, so I'm wondering if I either clicked in the wrong place or maybe uh, this person hadn't let go yet. So um, I'm going to drag around the data where I know the ball was in motion and not being touched by anything else. So I've highlighted those data points, and now I can come up to this button in the toolbar called the Curve Fit button. This is the most general way to fit your data. Um, I believe this should fit a linear trend because it's the uh, Y velocity. And so I'm going to pick the, there it is, I'm going to pick the linear equation. I'll click Try Fit, and then I can see a preview in here of the fit. And then I'll click OK. And it will display on here the slope and the intercept for me to uh, analyze. Now I can right click on this, I can go to the linear fit options, and I can uncheck the uncertainty if I don't want it to show uncertainty, but um, since I want to do an uncertainty analysis, I'm going to keep that checked so that it shows the uncertainty. Now if you'd like, you can even have it display the number of decimals that you want or the number of sig figs that you want. I know my uncertainty, it looks like my uncertainty is going to the hundredths place, so I'm going to tell this to show two decimal places. And so that will round my uncertainty to one decimal place and correspondingly my values, uh, excuse me, two decimal places and correspondingly my values to do de two decimal places as well. Now if you are doing a linear fit, there is a, a slightly quicker way to do this for just for linear fits. So let's pretend we hadn't done that yet. Um, instead of going to that Curve Fit button, there is this button right next to it, and it's called Linear Fit. Again, I can highlight the data points I want and click on that, and the Linear Fit will come up right away. Now notice it doesn't have these uncertainties in the slope and intercept, which I need, but again, I can right-click, go to Linear Fit Options, and show the uncertainty. And then I'll have the uncertainty that um, Logger Pro comes up with when running the fitting algorithm. And notice if I decide that I do want to include more data points, I can drag these brackets and the slope will adjust accordingly.